Can a multiplayer veteran handle a 1v3 as Revolutionary France in Europa Universalis 4? With Absolute Habibi at the helm, he will take on myself as Great Britain, Zlevik as Prussia, and Corbett as Austria. The Allied goal is simple, occupy Paris and capitulate the Bonaparte-led French nation. As Great Britain, my role will primarily be financially supporting the Prussian and Austrian troops as well as maintaining blockades on the Atlantic ports of France. Thus, economic strategy was to maximize trade income coming from Africa and India. After setting up our alliance network, the British Crown bankrolled the Prussian military state and allowed them to mobilize as many men as thought possible. The revolution was spreading into Austria, undoubtedly leading to civil unrest within their nation, further stoking resentment among the Habsburg government toward the French revolutionaries. The Royal Navy preparations began, commissioning over 50 heavy ships to ensure naval dominance once war broke out. The military preparations also continued, with research into more effective war engines being funded by the Crown. By this point, a large portion of the gross domestic product of the British Empire was being sent to Prussia and Austria to fund their military buildup, as their forces would be the primary movers in this conflict. But with that said, the British Army still intended to land on the continent and contribute in any way that it could, despite its small size when compared to the behemoth that other belligerents in the war were to be. After stationing troops in the lands of Hanover, a junior partner to the British Crown, the Royal Navy scouted the coast and spotted the French artillery corps drilling in Brittany undoubtedly anticipating the conflict that was to come. With revolutionary sentiment spreading into the British Isles, the decision was made to push the attack and to smash this movement. And after spotting the French Navy, we ended up having to reload a save. Because uh, taking hegemon apparently causes a truce because reasons. And so, armies were positioned with half the British forces supporting the Prussians and the French-controlled Dutch lowlands, and their other half under the Duke of Wellington supporting the Habsburgs on the Italian front. War was declared on the 4th of May, 1807, and the Bonaparte French took the initiative by aggressively assaulting the Prussian front lines of Münster, Meppen, and Ostfriesland simultaneously. British expeditionary forces supplemented the Prussian front lines and cannons, and meanwhile the Italian front advanced to occupy the Italian client state in Milan. The conclusion of the First Battle of the War, the Battle of Meppen, resulted in heavy losses for the French, with the Battle of Ostfriesland going even more poorly for the enemy, losing almost 60,000 cavalry in a single engagement. While Prussian and British forces marched to occupy the lowlands, the French simultaneously assaulted the Austrian forces in Italy, giving us a look at just how much vigor the French revolutionaries fight with, having 2.5 more morale than the Habsburg troops. And despite their best efforts and heavy losses for the French cavalry, the Battle of Mantova was another victory for the Allies, albeit costly for the victor. And so the occupations continued. Marching forward on both fronts, the war was going well for the Allies, despite losing over 640,000 brave souls up to this point. As the French pulled back to replenish their northern armies, the Italian front reignited with an assault on the forces sieging Bergamo in May of 1808, catching the British expeditionary forces off guard and inflicting massive casualties on the Duke of Wellington's army. Meanwhile, the northern front continued to push, swinging like a door, opening the way to Paris. The French forces left once again after recapturing strategic points previously captured by Allied forces in Italy, indicating that they were being redeployed for a massive assault on the Northern Coalition forces. And so, the Prussian and British forces in Northern France dug in, anticipating winter. The Duke of Wellington was once again caught out by French forces while trying to recapture the fort of Velschburn for the Austrians, resulting in catastrophic losses for his army. And as preparations for winter began in Northern France, the anticipated assault came in December, with the front eventually spreading over hundreds of kilometers. But as reinforcements poured in from both sides of the battle, it was clear that the Prussian military might was not to be bested this time, inflicting two to one casualties on the enemies in early battles, decimating France's horse population along the way. The renewed offense in the north left room for the Italian front to push, with Austrian forces eventually occupying all of the Italian client state around the summer of 1809. Not to be dissuaded, the French pushed another massive assault into the northern front, focusing on the Rethelois salient, but expanding the front lines to encompass Verdun, Luxembourg, and Cambossy, with over one million souls involved in the engagement. Meanwhile, the Royal Navy did what the Royal Navy does, and Britannia continued to rule the waves. The Italian front was more of the same, pushing all the way into Savoy and Provence in southern France, all the while the French armies poured into the northern offensive. The Second Battle of Rethelois resulted in almost 100% casualties for the front lines of Benoît de Quenne. To further solidify the victory, the Prussian forces marched on Reims and crushed retreating forces. At this point in the war, it was looking quite good for the Allied nations. That was until revolutionary sentiment reached Prussia and forced the armed forces into consolidating and downsizing. And so the Northern Front was weakened significantly. 
During this time, the French took the opportunity to counterpush in Provence, and despite valiant fighting on the part of the coalition forces, the final result was the same as prior, crushing the Austrian forces and pushing them entirely out of southern France and Italy altogether. As Prussian troops began to redeploy in the northern front, battles began with the French once again receiving massive blows at the Battle of Verdun and Luxembourg, with the latter resulting in the deaths of over 800,000 brave souls from both sides. At this point, we step back loaded up a save, and gave France some money and manpower to continue the war because we were having a lot of fun. At this point, when we loaded in, my recording software was acting funky and I lost a bit of footage, but I'm sure you can guess what most of it looked like. At this point in the war, the Austrian troops had abandoned the Southern Front altogether as the French forces had been entirely sent to the north and the Prussian forces had been severely weakened by internal strife and the Allies needed more men to fill the front lines. The desperate defense began at this point and the French sent wave after wave of brave young men to die in the fields of Northern France. Soon after this, the collapse of France came, and the occupations began as peace negotiations began in London. The final battle took place in October of 1819, where the remaining French Revolutionary Guard were destroyed. The Treaty of London was signed soon after, ceding land to all three of the coalition nations. Nine million in <laughs> battle. I looked at reinforcement uh, after the first set of battles and said you need to reinforce 980,000. Yeah. <laughs> I took Corsica and Calais. I gave Flanders to Austria, as well as their core down here in the Sundgau, and then Frisia and North Rhine to Prussia, as well as Limburg was uh, reconquested for Prussia. Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Definitely something a little different from what I would normally do. I'd usually do most of my audio live, and instead we tried a little bit of something different here. Doing a little bit of post-editing, post-audio. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure you let me know. Leave a like on the video and uh, leave a comment down below if you have any feedback. I definitely appreciate that. I want to make sure that I'm making content that you guys enjoyed. And if you did enjoy and you haven't already subscribed, I definitely recommend you click that red button below the video. And if you ding the bell, you'll get notified when we upload new videos. If you're looking for some cool community, you can check out my Discord, my subreddit my twitter they're all linked in the description below the video and if you have a couple extra bucks and you want to pitch it my way my patreon is linked below as well but that's all i've got for you for today until next time stay chill guys